I already knew that something was up, but decided that I would not press the issue until she got home. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel Ara Zone Stories. Today we have a story where this woman had to leave the house because her boyfriend knows her secrets. Let's see what actually happened. This has been burning a hole in me for the few days. I've asked close friends and some family members about what to do, but advice from uninvolved people would help lots. Dates, ages, and irrelevant details changed, because while she does browse Reddit, I don't think she knows this particular subreddit exists. Background, my girlfriend and I have been dating for around four years now. We met in college and have been inseparable ever since. I think that we've had a really good, extremely emotionally healthy relationship with very few major roadblocks or problems, which is why this has come as such a shock to me. I can genuinely say that she has been my ideal partner, and I do still think that she is a good person at heart despite all of this. We have been living together since graduation, and have discussed marriage. I have gone ring shopping but hadn't picked anything out yet, and our future together extensively. We are both very much monogamous, and have agreed multiple times in the past that we have zero tolerance for any form of infidelity. The issue, our respective families leave on opposite sides of the country. We have alternated where we spend our holidays in the past, but this year decided to each head to our respective hometowns using two weeks of accrued vacation time. Everything was very normal and happy until New Year's Eve. She ignored my text and phone call to wish her a happy new year. The phone call was relatively understandable due to time zone differences and didn't end up responding to me until the next morning. I have a very good understanding of her, and this was completely not normal. I already knew that something was up, but decided that I would not press the issue until she got home. I ended up not having to wait. She called me the next day and made a confession. She had spent the evening of New Year's with her family, and then joined some old acquaintances from college. Her family leaves in a large city to go clubbing around 11. They all ended up getting wasted, and the night ended doing bedroom activity with some guy we vaguely knew in college in a back room. Just typing this out makes me start to cry. She claims that they did not have bedroom activity, which I tentatively believe because she is very, very bad at lying to me. I, naturally, told her that we were done and that I would prefer her to stay with one of her friends until I am able to find other means of housing. She has been completely destroyed by the breakup. She has been blowing up my phone begging for a second chance, that this was completely uncharacteristic of her, and that I know this wasn't her. She doesn't have any explanation for why she did it, she just says that everyone was incredibly wasted and things just happened. I agreed to meet with her in a public place, because I want to be able to look her in the eyes, and ask why she decided to throw away everything we had built. I have been repeatedly telling her that there is basically no chance for me to move past this, but I think she still believes that she can convince me to salvage things. I am wrong to be hitting the nuclear button here. Do good people who do terrible things and cause extreme pain to others deserve a second chance? I really don't know. I want to just be able to hug her and do all the other stuff we used to do as a couple together, but at the same time I'm chock full of rage and disgust with her. I really think that she is absolutely devastated by her actions and is extremely remorseful. I just have no clue if I can ever move past this. I want to give her credit for owning up to it almost immediately, but I don't know how much of that is her being remorseful, and how much of it is her knowing that I would be able to tell that she'd messed up from her demeanor when I saw her in person. Thank you in advance for any comments and advice. I really appreciate it. He will never completely trust this woman again. And he shouldn't. It doesn't matter if she blew a guy. What matters is she is untrustworthy. She knowingly behaved in a way that hurt him. That is not love. If he accept this now, be prepared to accept it over and over again. What do you do? You continue doing what you've been doing. You move forward. You're showing that you have self-respect. She is trying to utilize crocodile tears, fake tears created in order to manipulate you, in order to secure her bread and butter plan B. How do I know this? Simple. The first chance that she had to cheat, she took. If she was sorry, she wouldn't have done it in the first place. Breathing just happens. Wind just happens. The sun giving us sunlight just happens, as does the changing of the days and the seasons. Her having oral bedroom activity is still part of the act. It didn't just happen. She chose to follow Guy into a room, take off her clothes, and do what she did. 
she made a choice, and you're serving her well by teaching her a lesson about actions having consequences. There will be some in the comments section whom will tell you that forgiveness is important, and that you could find a way to move past it and stay with her. It's not your job to stay with her and move past it. If you take her back, she'll know that she can get away with it, and likely continue to do it. She'll also lose respect for you subconsciously. You're doing the right thing by not being a doormat. I commend you, your ability to be steadfast, and your self-respect. Continue moving forward with your life. You're going to be okay. We dated for three years and are married for seven. We have two kids. We have always functioned very well as practical, domestic partners. But I'd say other than when we first started dating, the passion hasn't exactly been fierce. Life has always been okay, but she views it as more of a necessity than something she really gets into. The past few years have been especially rough on us though. She has always been a fitness addict, deep issues from childhood, used to be anorexic, but now just insanely fit and muscular. But the past few years has felt an increasing urge for me to be attractive and muscular like she is. I'm physically active but slightly overweight. Deep contempt and resentment has built on her end because despite my efforts I have not been able to achieve that for her. There were times I did make a lot of progress, but she was distracted by recent childbirths health stuff, etc. so it didn't really change things between us. That contempt has caused her to pull away on me a bit and perhaps not give me the love and respect I need. And that in turn has caused me to pull away. And we kind of just ended up like domestic partners who raise kids together and sometimes have bedroom activity. But saying, I love you got kind of awkward and we just didn't make emotional space for each other. Several months ago, I noticed she started to get close to a neighbor of ours who is a bit older, attractive, muscular, etc. They're both stay-at-home folks, as am I, to be fair, and would see each other outside a lot. So one time the three of us were chatting and invited him over. He's also married but his wife is very busy and never joined. I noticed she was super flirty with him when he came over that night, in front of me, and she didn't even notice. I told her at that point that I was concerned about this, and that it looked like she had obvious attraction to him. I said I thought this could lead to bad places, and didn't think they should be friends, but she was adamant that they were only friends, that he was happily married, and that she'd obey if I forbade it, but would probably resent my being so controlling. She said it was so important to her to have a friend like him who was into fitness like she was and who she felt like she could talk to, and she didn't want to be penalized and lose that just because it happened to be a man. Our marriage was really not in a great place at this point, and we had discussed divorce on account of just how emotionally distant we had become, and the fact that neither of us was meeting the other's needs. So I said I'd trust her and implored her to be careful about safeguarding herself from letting things go farther. I reminded her what I've always said, which is that infidelity is something I would never tolerate, and that it would be a no questions asked divorce if she ever cheated on me. Without getting into all the detail, I'll just say that they started spending more and more time together, and he asked a lot of personal questions like a therapist would, then used those answers to get in deeper and deeper. She felt like they had a real connection, but it was strictly platonic, with him frequently mentioning his wife and appearing happily married until early to mid-December. Then he confessed his feelings suggested they have an affair and she took some time to think about it. Then when I was out of town about one to two weeks later it happened. She said it was five times over the course of three to four weeks, four of which were full on bedroom activity and other things. It happened while I was in town a few times, and a couple when I was around but out of the house. It was premeditated and carefully concealed. I could see she was struggling with something very deeply, and I thought maybe she was getting ready to divorce me. But we have always communicated openly and she wasn't talking to me. We were also individually and together seeing a marriage counselor for 10 months, and she started not talking to me as much about what they were discussing. I was suspicious of her and the neighbor, so one night while she was asleep I did something I've never done before and looked in her phone. I found messages between them that confirmed an intimate relationship had existed but that they had ended the physical component. 
However, they were still grieving that together and lamenting not being able to be together while having to pretend everything was okay with their spouses. My wife has always told everyone, including our therapist and including the man she cheated with, how much she loves me and that I'm the perfect man in every way, a leader in the community, a great earner, a great husband to her who cares about her happiness, and a great father to our children, but that she simply lacks with me the passion that she promised herself when she was younger that she would not settle for not having in her life. She said that drove her crazy, not having the passion, and is what ultimately led to this multi-year downward spiral that culminated in this affair. She tried to lie and gaslight me when I found out, but eventually she confessed and told me everything. She cried and begged and apologized when I told her I thought we should separate and start working on a divorce. We consulted our counselor and he told me that I am justified if I want to divorce her, but I can't really undo that. So he suggested that there's no reason to make an immediate decision, and that I can give it a week or two or four and see how I'm feeling. Why didn't I divorce her immediately? We have built a great life together on paper. We love our kids. We are financially well off. We are well known and hold leadership roles in our community. We communicate well and don't have big arguments or yell at each other, except on rare occasion. That's a lot to throw away if there's an alternative. So let's talk about the alternative. Since the time I found out about the affair, she has been a different person. We messaged him from her account saying that I knew about the affair, and she wanted to stay with me and she asked him never to contact her again before blocking him on all accounts. She has become very introspective and reassuring. I'm finally seeing from her the partner I always wanted her to be. She says she had gotten into a terrible place emotionally, and this is the first time she is clearly seeing how much we have together, and how important it is to her, and how she doesn't want to lose it. She says she wants to do whatever work she can on herself to keep me. She's also honest with me that she's grieving the loss of the connection she had with our neighbor and that this is going to take time for her to get over. She's working through that in therapy. She's also working on trying to be more accepting of me in my current body, being less selfish and more emotionally available, etc. For the two weeks since I found out, these things have really transformed our marriage for the better. Part of me looks at the affair and says that if this and her reaching rock bottom, in her words, are what she needed as a catalyst for personal change, and that really results in our having a stronger and closer marriage, then great. Our therapist and advisors have all seen cases of infidelity that ultimately ended in people having a stronger marriage. My struggle is how to cope with feeling like I'm not respecting myself if I don't leave. This betrayal hurts. My logical part of my brain says she messed up big time, especially given that I saw this happening in slow motion and warned her about it, and she just didn't think she would ever let it happen. I probably should leave her. But, that's so self-defeating in a sense if we do have a chance to come out stronger than this. Our parents are all divorced and three-fourths of them never got into a serious relationship again, and are completely alone and unhappy decades later, and one-fourth has a long-term girlfriend that he's had some pretty rocky times with. It would completely shake up our kids' lives and would mean I would be at least 50% of the time without them, which would be very hard for me. People say you shouldn't stay together for kids, but on the surface our marriage still looks great, and they think we love each other and I think even in our worst times we still model what a loving marriage should look like. I feel like I'm still on the fence about what to do, but inertia would keep me in the marriage for now unless something crazy happens. She is serious about loving me and wanting to stay together, but she's also honest that she doesn't know if she'll ever have the level of passion for me that she thinks she wants to have in her marriage, and that this may lead to her not being content in the future. She says she would never, ever make the mistake of cheating again. But, I know how this sort of shame can fade over time once you've crossed this line. Am I certain this won't happen again in 10 years? No, but I've learned from this experience that there is no certainty. I would never in a million years have expected this from her, and it did happen once and to me that means it can always happen again. So, here I am trying to decide what to do. Do I blow up our lives even though we're in counseling, she's working on herself, and our marriage at present feels better than it's ever been? Is this acceptance of me that I'm seeing right now sustainable? Or am I just wasting time waiting for the same issues to creep up again? I guess it's impossible to say without knowing the future. Or, do I wait around to see what the future holds, allowing for the possibility of a better marriage than we had before, which seems to be the trajectory we are on now, at the possible expense of regressing and having wasted more time, and gotten myself in more emotionally deeper.
If she decide to stay, be prepared it will happen again. He will be a doormat and sweep all ruck. If he did go, it will hurt but the pain will go away after some time. The world is wide and not short of good women who deserve to have a good husband. We cannot live in uncertainty and fear things will happen again. There is a lot of beautiful good women out there for him to choose. Why we should be stuck with one who is unfaithful. I hope he really consider his choices for the benefit of himself not others. I never saw a man fight so hard for someone who isn't worthy. Truth be told, when this happens again, it's going to be 100% your fault. Do not blame her for one second. Also, I don't understand why you're here. If you're going to be with her, you cannot hold her hand or demand anything from her. You have to trust her 1000%, otherwise what is the point of reconciliation? You clearly aren't there yet, and more than likely, you probably will never be. This is strange. By the way, you can still love her, sleep with her, and even start a new relationship with her if you want, but you don't need to be married to her to do any of that. This marriage is over, and there's no sense in staying married if you just want the companionship. You need to start from scratch, and you can't do that until you divorce. Maybe marriage will be in the future for the two of you again. But in the meantime, show her and your kids what it looks like to know you're worthy of a spouse who won't cheat. Set a good example, otherwise kids might grow up resenting both of you, or even worse, thinking it's okay to cheat or be the one getting cheated on, because that's how mom and dad did it.